Okay, let's talk about linear and angular speed. Okay, so our scenario here is we've got something rotating in a circle. That's the best way to think of this. So we've got something rotating around. So if we think of this as a central angle with a radius r, theta is increasing. And we could define this guy omega as the change in theta per change in time. And see, the book writes at this, theta over t. I like to think more of it as change in theta per unit time. It's how quickly something is rotating. So this is an angular speed or angular velocity. It's how quickly we're rotating. So it could be measured in, say, radians per second, maybe. That would be the most natural unit. Or degrees per day. Some measure of rotation divided by some measure of time. Or maybe revolutions per minute. That's a common measure of omega, RPM. So if you look at the dials on your car, one of the dials you have is RPM. That's how quickly your engine is cycling, revolutions per minute. And that's a measure of omega. It's how quickly something is cycling around. Okay, so if we look at a point here, this guy here, rotating around a circle, and I want to know the distance it's traveled, we know arc length, S distance, is just R times omega if I'm in degrees. Or, <laughs> that's not true. If I'm in radians, S equals R theta. What if I want to know how fast something is traveling? Literally in meters per second or feet per second. It's literal speed. Well, I could just think change in S per change in time would be R change in theta per change in time. That's just velocity. That's just speed. And change in theta over change in time we define to be our omega. So my linear speed is just the radius times my angular speed. Here's my angular speed. Let's circle that whole thing. So we could ask, be asked a bunch of things. I could say something is rotating at some speed, some rate. And I want to know how fast is something on the rim actually moving? What's its linear speed? Well, then V is just R omega. I got to worry about units usually, make sure I'm in some kind of natural units. It's usually best to just convert to radians per second. I could even ask how far something has traveled. Like what's its total distance? Well, that would just be its total angle times its radius if I'm measured in radians. So the key to most of these is convert everything to radians per second first. Or radians per hour or something like that. So I've got this problem here. We've got, here's the Earth, here's a satellite. That's a satellite up there. Rotating around the Earth. It's some distance from the center of the Earth. We've got 6378 to get to the surface of the Earth, plus another 242 above the Earth. So my total distance from the center is 6378 plus 242. R here means distance from the center. The radius of the circle the satellite is going in. It's an ugly circle, but you see what I mean. So what is that? 6378 plus 242. 6620. 
kilometers. I know that my angular speed, omega, is 0.25 radians per hour. I want to figure out the linear speed. Well, that's not too bad because V equals R omega. As long as I'm using radians per something, V equals R omega. Like we can even look at our units here. R is measured in kilometers, 66, 20 kilometers. Omega is measured in radians per second, so times 0.25 radians, sorry, radians per hour. This is over one. Radians are unitless. I can ignore, I didn't even have to write radians there. Radians have no units. My units here are going to be kilometers over hours. Hey, that's what they asked for, kilometers per hour. I don't have to do any fancy converting here. So this is just 6620 times 0.25. And I can just hit here times 0.25, 1655 kilometers per hour. That satellite is moving over 1600 kilometers per hour. Okay, right, let's do a more complicated one. Now we've got a bicycle wheel. The diameter is 28 inches. I always want radius here. So if the diameter is 28, the radius will be 14 inches. This was inches. They give me this rotational speed. Omega is 180 RPM, revolutions per minute. I'm going to have to convert that over into radians per second. Um, let's see, I could probably get by with doing radians per minute if I want. And then my final speed will just be in inches per minute. Because they didn't tell me what units to use for the final answer. So I'm going to end up in inches per minute, which is fine. Okay, so let's convert this. I know one revolution is equal to 2 pi radians. So I want to multiply this thing by a fraction that's equal to 1. I want to multiply this either by 1 revolution over 2 pi radians or 2 pi radians. per one revolution. I want to convert this thing. I want to end up in radians per minute. So whatever I multiply by, I want radians on top so that I end up with radians. And I want revolutions on the bottom so that I can cancel the revolutions. That's this fraction. If I multiply this by 2 pi radians, per one revolution, those things are equal. I'm really multiplying by one. Revolutions cancel out, and I'm left with radians over minutes, which is what I want. Now just multiply across on the top and across the bottom. 180 times 2 times pi. 1130.97 radians per minute. Now I want to find the linear speed. Now this one we got to think about. Think about a bicycle traveling down the road. The speed at which a point here, so imagine this point right here on the bicycle tire. The speed that it's moving around the circle is exactly the same speed that the bike is traveling down the road. Because this is the point of contact right there. The speed that that point is moving this way is the same speed the bike is moving that way. Because the 
tire is moving around at that linear speed, traveling down the road. So V just equals R omega. So V here will be R 14 times that omega, 1130.97. That was in, let's look at our units here. R was in inches times radians per minute. Radians are unitless. They don't, we can just ignore radians. My answer here is going to be in inches per minute. So I just take that last answer times 14, 15,833 point, what was it, 63, if we round to two places, inches per minute. Now, if we wanted to, we could go through a bunch of trouble and convert that over into miles per hour or kilometers per second or whatever unit we wanted to convert to. Playing the same kind of unit analysis, dimensional analysis we did here. And we'll do some extra videos later with more complicated problems. But these are the basic angular and linear speed problems. And that's a good place to stop.